The spooky world of Resident Evil is back, and in classic fashion, Capcom isn't afraid to load it up with awesome easter eggs, nods to the past and some fantastic attention to detail. Here are 17 brilliant little details we found so far in Resident Evil Village. The game kicks off in Ethan and Mia's lovely new European abode, and although it seems like the horrors of Resident Evil are behind them, there's a couple of stark reminders. First up, before putting your daughter Rose to bed, be sure to take a left at the top of the stairs, and at the end of the hall you'll find a Mr. Everywhere bobblehead, one of the collectibles from Resident Evil 7. Why Ethan's held onto a reminder of the worst day of his life though, we have no idea. Why do I even keep this around? I should get rid of it someday. Just to the right of the Mr. Everywhere is a room containing a bookshelf, on which is a book titled A Historical Look into the Architecture of Eastern European Castles and Keeps by George Trevor. Yep, that's right, the same George Trevor who, under the order of Umbrella founder Oswald E. Spencer, more on him later, designed the original Spencer Mansion for the very first Resident Evil. Trevor was also an expert in building traps and puzzles, and considering his love for European castles, it seems like Trevor has been taking some inspiration from some of the ancient devices Ethan finds during the game, particularly when it comes to flattening our protagonist like a sandwich. You were almost a Jill sandwich. Ethan's house contains another book that'll get the attention of hardcore Resident Evil fans. In Ethan's study, you'll find Gun Survivalist, a heavy firearm manual for field combat situations by Joseph Kendo, the brother of Resident Evil 2's gun shop owner Robert Kendo, and former Star's weapon expert and creator of the Samurai Edge. It's not paranoia if they're really out to get you. Lastly, in Ethan's house, you'll notice an abundance of wine called Regina Rosie. Not that interesting on its own, but later in the game in Castle Dimitrescu, you'll notice the same wine bottles in the wine room. Could it just be a recycled asset? Most likely, but considering the castle is a producer of wine, I like to imagine that Ethan and Mia have been drinking wine produced by Lady D herself. Hopefully they never took into a bottle of the maiden's blood infused Sanguis Virginis though. Man blood. <laughs> Just outside Castle Dimitrescu is where we first meet the Duke, Resident Evil Village's helpful Resident Evil 4 inspired merchant. Turns out though, the Duke and the merchant share more of a connection beyond retail than we thought. When perusing for the Duke's wares, he'll say, What are you buying? <laughs> Just something an old friend of mine used to say. Referring to his now apparent former work friend. What are you buying? Treasure is found everywhere in Resident Evil Village, but it's also easily missed. Making a return to the series is the extremely handy map marking system, which, with a simple change of colour, can alert you there's an object in the area still to be found. Extremely helpful for those pesky, well-hidden crystals. And speaking of treasure, all of it can be sold to the Duke, but it's important to note that a few rare items can actually be combined with other treasures to maximise your profit. So make sure to inspect your list before immediately offloading the treasure to the tubby trader. Lacking the cash to make your next purchase? Well, besides the obvious places you might find some more lay, it's also worth picking off some local crows. They don't drop meat like all the other animals in the game, but surprisingly they do actually always carry a shitload of cash with them. Weird. The Duke is also a master of the kitchen, offering you up delicious, stat-boosting meals to aid you in your quest. But instead of your poultry taking up spaces in your precious inventory until you have all the ingredients, you can actually deposit items for later use. Infinitely more desirable than carrying raw meat in your pockets, and more importantly, it frees up space for that vital ammo. As is Resident Evil tradition, conserving ammo for your big bads is all part of the game. In Heisenberg's factory, you'll come across a room with giant pistons that need to be deactivated. If you leave them going though, you can actually bait your enemies and let the environment do the work for you. Sniper rifle ammo can also be conserved. If you take your time, you can often line up your opposition so that bullets can be targeted for double or even triple penetration. And yes, sorry, I know that sounds disgusting, but so was this shot. If you've got bullets to spare though and you're feeling a little showboaty, you can actually shoot flaming arrows out of the sky, much to the annoyance of the Lycan hordes. And although it isn't encouraged, if you're feeling extra flashy, you can also pick them out of the air with your knife like an absolute legend. But the ultimate in flashy weapons is the LZ Ansara, a charged particle blade that can be earned by mastering Resident Evil Village's mercenary mode. Not only can you now slice through enemies like you're in a galaxy far, far away, but you can even channel your inner Darth Maul with a double-bladed extension. 
And while you're in the game store, picking out your LZ answer and other new weapons, make sure you check out the concept galleries for extra behind the scenes information. If you have the Trauma Pack DLC, you'll also gain access to the tragedy of Ethan Winter's artwork, containing all sorts of juicy nuggets. A particular highlight reveals that at one point, the returning Ada Wong was due to be in the game and would help save Ethan from the trial scene with Mother Miranda and the Four Lords. Also included in the Trauma Pack DLC is the ability to now set your saved typewriters to the Resident Evil 7 tape recorders. You can also turn on the Resident Evil 7 found footage feature and set your save through music to Go Tell Aunt Rhody, the theme from RE7. Resident Evil Village takes place over the course of one day, but what you might not know is if you back out to the main menu at any point, the environment will now change depending on the time of day of your most recent save. And finally, although it's hidden in collectibles, Resident Evil Village ties the whole series together with a couple of notes. Before you head to the Stronghold, make sure you take the optional path that leads to the boss battle with an axe swinging giant. After your victory, you'll now enter a meat-filled room with a note about a mysterious stranger who once visited the village and an outside world medical company whose logo looks familiar to the one in the village caves. And later, when you enter Miranda's lab, you'll find some more notes that confirm the man to be none other than Umbrella founder Oswald E. Spencer, who was not only inspired by the cave symbol for the Umbrella logo, but also Mother Miranda's human infection philosophy in general meaning that Mother Miranda was not only responsible for the plot of Resident Evil Village, but she's the one who helped set the wheels in motion for the entire series. I've spent a lifetime creating this moment, and you try to take it away from me. I will take what is due. And that's all the awesome details that we noticed in Resident Evil Village. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments, and for more brilliant details on Resident Evil, why not check out our list for Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Remake?